In today's lecture, we will talk about the adrenergic agonists, also known as sympathomimetics. So now what are adrenergic agonists? These are the drugs that mimic, copy the actions of epinephrine and norepinephrine. Uh, you know, epinephrine, norepinephrine, uh, they perform certain functions in the body. So when uh, you take any other drug and that drug also performs the function of epinephrine, norepinephrine, then that drug or then those drugs are known as adrenergic agonists because they're copying the action of these uh, epinephrine, norepinephrine. And uh, epinephrine is also known as adrenaline and norepinephrine is also known as noradrenaline due to which we get the term adrena, adrenergic. And uh, due to which again the drugs are also called as adrenergic agonists which are copying the actions of the adrenaline, noradrenaline. Now what is this adrenaline, noradrenaline? These are actually the neurotransmitters of the sympathetic nervous system. So before we move towards the pharmacology, we must have a shortcut identification or the concept of the sympathetic nervous system. Then it will be very easy for us to understand the pharmacology. So the very first thing, sympathetic nervous system, from where it originates. This sympathetic nervous system originates from the thoracolumbar region of the spinal cord and later it does the synthesis of the epinephrine and norepinephrine. And then this epinephrine norepinephrine will move towards specific receptors present on the organs in the body and then this epinephrine norepinephrine will stimulate those receptors and then those receptors will perform certain functions. So the receptors on which the epinephrine norepinephrine are going to bind, they are the alpha and beta receptors, known as adrenergic receptors or adrenoceptors because uh, the name is given to them adrena because these are actually binding to the adrenaline and noradrenaline due to which we are giving these receptors the name as adrenergic or adrenoceptors. So these are actually of two types, alpha and beta. Alpha is further divided into alpha 1 and alpha 2. Beta is and further divided into beta 1, beta 2 and beta 3. So now uh, when your sympathetic nervous system activates, suppose uh, I will give you example by means of epinephrine. So when it releases the epinephrine, by means of epinephrine, it will control different organs when it is the condition of fight, flight or fright. You know, sympathetic system activates when it is uh, a stressful condition, like when you are in the fight uh, or when you are in the flight or when you are in the fright condition. Fight, flight, fright. Okay. So let me give you an example of by the epinephrine. Suppose uh, now our sympathetic nervous system is activated and it has released the neurotransmitter now as epinephrine. This epinephrine when binds to the receptors present on the radial muscles of the eye. Uh, the type is alpha 1 type so when it binds to the alpha 1 receptors present on the radial muscles of the eye it will cause the contraction of these muscles and uh, the pupil size will increase will dilate pupillar dilation will happen known as midriasis so the next thing that happens during the emergency condition is that energy providing so this energy will be provided by the epinephrine when it binds to the beta 2 receptors it will cause the breakdown of the glycogen so what will happen, glycogenolysis will happen due to which energy will be produced. And in the meanwhile, when epinephrine binds to the uh, beta 2 receptors on the bronchial, it will cause the bronchial dilation. So what will happen then when the bronchioles are dilated, then it will be easy for a person to do the inhalation and exhalation. Like this, enough concentration of oxygen will be provided to the blood. And as a result, it will be provided to the whole body. And again, when epinephrine binds to the beta 2 receptors of the arterioles, the blood vessels that are supplying the blood to the muscles so when these uh, receptors beta 2 are stimulated by the epinephrine these vessels will become dilated and you know when the vessels are dilated the blood flow will increase so the blood flow towards the muscles will increase and then the activity of the muscle will increase during the sympathetic activation and again during sympathetic activation we also need our heart to pump more so like this epinephrine will bind to the beta 1 receptors on the heart and the heart will contract more and like this what will happen the blood will be pumped out, cardiac output will increase and uh, further we need uh, to increase the blood pressure. So like this what will happen, epinephrine will bind to the alpha 1 receptors on the blood vessels which will cause the contraction of the blood vessels and like this blood pressure will be increased. And what we don't need is that we don't need to increase the GRT mortality and uh, we don't want to urine during the fight, flight, fight, you can say during the stress condition. So our epinephrine, when it binds to the beta 2 receptors on the GIT, it will cause a decrease in GIT mortality. And when it binds to the beta 3 receptors on the detrusor muscles of the bladder, it will cause the relaxation of the bladder. And when it binds to the alpha 1 receptors of the sphincter, it will cause the constriction of the sphincter muscles due to which urine will retain.
and the beta 3 will cause relaxation and capacity will be increased for the urine to stay in the bladder and like this when it uh, increases the contraction of the sphincter by means of alpha 1 it will cause the contraction of the sphincter like this the urine will stay in the bladder so in the emergency condition we don't need GHA mortality to be increased and urination so these both will be decreased and what increased will be uh, the heart rate the blood vessel contraction the supply of the blood to the muscles and uh, the glycogenolysis and the pupillary dilation and the bronchial dilation so now in a nutshell uh, let me give you a very uh, specific understanding about the receptors when epinephrine binds to the alpha 1 beta 1 they will cause the stimulation and this stimulation will be a kind of the contraction some other actions may, might also be seen but here uh, regarding now according to this structure according to this lecture uh, what you must remember is that when epinephrine binds to the alpha 1 beta 1 it will cause a contraction uh, by means of stimulation of these receptors so when these receptors are stimulated by means of the epinephrine it will cause the contraction of the specific organ of the body and when the epinephrine binds to the alpha 2 and beta 2 you know alpha 2 beta 2 they are gi coupled and uh, this epinephrine will give inhibitory signal to the alpha 2 and beta 2 which will cause relaxing effects so somehow relaxation will happen in the uh, body organs when these receptors are the stimulated and some other functions are also seen when uh, beta 2 receptors are stimulated so let's move towards the pharmacology uh, pharmacology of the adrenergic agonist includes two groups direct acting and indirect acting direct acting drugs are those which will act directly on the receptors they will stimulate the receptors and then the stimulated receptor will show specific action and indirect they will actually cause increase in the concentration of the neurotransmitter in the synapses so when it's in the synapses the between the pre and post synaptic neuron the space that is called a synapsis so in the synapsis or in the synaptic cleft the neurotransmitter concentration increases it will cause increase in the effect of the neurotransmitter so coming to the first one direct acting alpha we have two alpha and beta direct acting alpha are further divided into three alpha non-selective alpha one selective alpha two selective alpha non-selective which will act both on the alpha one and alpha two receptor Example of the drug is norepinephrine. So now this norepinephrine has got to very uh, clinically, it is used for very really some reasons. Like when it is a condition of shock, we use uh, the norepinephrine. Because norepinephrine uh, is showing somehow more action on the alpha 1. You know, when alpha 1 is stimulated, it will cause the contraction of the blood vessels. When the contraction happens, you know, in case of hypotension, we need to increase the blood pressure. So in that condition, we will use norepinephrine. And there uh, is no any kind of other therapeutic uh, clinical use seen for the of the norepinephrine. Second one is uh, alpha-1 selective. These uh, phenylephrine, they will selectively stimulate the alpha-1 receptor. And uh, phenylephrine is clinically used for the nasal congestion. And uh, what happens when a nasal, when a nose congests? there is a kind of a dilation of the blood vessels so when you constrict the blood vessels then nasal congestion will be uh, recovered so when we give phenylephrine it will stimulate the alpha 1 receptor and you know alpha 1 receptor when it is stimulated it will cause the contraction of the blood vessels and before the blood vessels were, were dilated which were causing the congestion when it is constricted then the congestion is lost so like this phenylephrine is used as a decongestant and alpha 2 selective known as clonidine we did not discuss alpha 2 here and here is alpha 2 receptor present on the uh, presynaptic neuron so when it is stimulated it will give the signal to the neuron not to release norepinephrine so it is actually used uh, for the treatment of hypertension and uh, some other drugs are also used for treatment of hypertension like methyl dopa and we have already discussed our antihypertensive drugs so it is just a kind of short review about the alpha 2 selective clonidine now let's move towards the beta non-selective I saw proterinol is a very good example of that it is going to act on both the beta 1 and beta 2 because it is non-selective and uh, its uh, most action that is seen is on the beta 1 receptor so you know beta 1 receptor is mostly found on the heart and when it is stimulated what is going to happen contraction heart rate increased and uh, the next one is beta 1 selective which is going to selectively bind to the beta 1 receptors on the heart so we often use isoproterinol and dobutamine for the cardiac diseases and beta 1 selective is preferred as compared to isoproterinol because it is non-selective isoproterinol binds both to beta 1 and beta 2 so when we need selective effect we will go for the selective drugs then now let's move towards the next one that is beta 2 selective examples are the sulmoterol, formoterol, albuterol and terbutaline 
the very first two these are the long acting beta 2 agonists and the next two are the short acting beta 2 agonists so what do we do use these medication for these are used for the respiratory disorders and uh, you know when beta 2 is stimulated in the lungs it will cause the bronchial dilation and those patient those who feel uh, uncomfortable in breathing so when we give these drugs these will cause ease in breathing so due to which what will happen when we give a beta 2 selective agonist these beta 2 selective agonist they will dilate the uh, bronchioles and like this the breathing will be come easy and uh, the next one we have is uh, the beta 3 agonist Example is Mirabegron and this drug has got a very interesting function is that it is going to relax the detrusor muscle. You know when the detrusor muscle is relaxed then the capacity of the bladder will increase to hold the urine. And uh, the very next one that is uh, about the indirect acting uh, adrenal septors, adrenergic agonist. These indirect uh, they will cause the increase in the concentration of the uh, epinephrine or epinephrine in the synapses, the space between pre and post synaptic neuron. So we have two types, releases and reuptake inhibitors. Releases like amphetamine, it will cause increase in the release of the epinephrine or norepinephrine from the presynaptic neuron into the synapses. And reuptake inhibitor, you know it is reuptake inhibitor. The available epinephrine or epinephrine in the synapses do not move back to the new presynaptic neuron. So like this the concentration of epinephrine, norepinephrine will increase in the synapses which will cause increase in the activity of epinephrine, norepinephrine. Means like this these releases and, and reuptakers, amphetamine and cocaine, they will cause increase in the activity of the epinephrine, norepinephrine. So that's why they are called as indirect acting agonists. So they are helping the epinephrine, norepinephrine. And these are actually acting like epinephrine, norepinephrine due to which they are also called as agonist but these are the direct agonist so this is a short concept from my side about the adrenergic or sympathomimetics so if still you have any kind of uh, question regarding the topic you can drop that in the comment box we'll come for the answers very soon thank you for watching